This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another edition of Silent Voices. I'm your host Dennis Lawrence and along today we have a special guest all the way from Warren, Michigan. Daniel and Brenda Blue. And they are foster parents slash adopted parents for the last eight years. And welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, you had a few problems with a daughter who was a foster, foster child, or was this adopted daughter? Adopted. Okay, she had been adopted, and she uh, made some allegations uh, about your husband. Can you yes. tell us? About her dad. Um, she um, uh, stated that her dad had uh, was... When, I, when she initially told me, she told me that her dad was trying to look at her. And I said, how? And she stated he um, uh, was trying to look at her. And I said, well, I caught her in three lies, so I didn't feel the, uh, as though I should report that because I had caught her in three lies. So she ran off to the girl down the street and they took nine hours before they took her to the police station. When she got to the police station, it turned into full-blown touching and trying to actually penetrate her. So we, um, uh, the police uh, and CPS came over and removed all the kids from the home. And after they removed all the kids from the home, uh, we went to like a TDM hearing and then we went before the judge. Uh, the, they stated that this should be cleared up within 10 days. However... Okay, tell me Brenda, uh, did they have any proof? Uh, it's my understanding according to the police report the CPS worker stated in the original allegation and was that on the removal of the children that they it had been reported that Michelle has in her possession a used condom and sex toy used in the incident. Well, what was reported by the CPS worker? She made a statement uh, that in the original allegation that there was a report that my daughter had in her possession a condom and a, a used condom and a sex toy used in the incident an incident that no one proved had, that had ever happened. So my dilemma is for a CPS worker, someone that we would expect we would have trust in and someone who would be honest, will make a statement like that and not have any type of proof at all. Can you imagine the type, the, the way that person felt with someone making an allegation like that from a trusted professional from the state of Michigan with no proof at all? Okay, and, and you would figure there would have been some DNA testing on that. I understand that she was not taken to the hospital for 18 days to be examined. That's, exactly. That, that's the problem for me. If you're going to make an allegation on someone, especially someone with that type of a nature, you would want to make absolutely sure before you start writing anything and documenting it, something that could destroy a person's history and livelihood, that you'd have proof. There was no proof of anything except someone took the time to make a statement that they couldn't even prove. And the detective in the case, uh, Detective Coning, uh, did, did he ever see this condom, this uh, sex toy? 
They made copies did, of it. Did they do any <laughs> any DNA testing? No, we requested that my husband go to an independent lab and do DNA testing because we knew it did not belong to him. However, uh, they came up with the excuse that, oh, well, she loaned her purse out to one of her friends at school, so it must belong to her. And the friend is uh, unknown to us at this time, so uh, that's what was said, and they said there'd be no further investigating on that because it was out, it was out of her, out of her uh, control during that time. So the detective made his report and the prosecuting attorney, did he prosecute you in criminal court? No. no. The, the prosecuting attorney, very, very sharp, very sharp, took a look at the evidence that was presented to her and said that because of lack of credibility, she wasn't going any further. That took all of 15 to 20 seconds. But this case and the investigations that came from it took about uh, nine months. Nine months. And okay, well. Because CPS would not let it go. Well, that's, that was my next question there. You thought you were in the clear there. There you go. Well, he's not going to be charged. There wasn't enough evidence. You thought you was going to get your children to come home. Yes. But CPS took charge, and what happened there? CPS decided to, uh, since they could not prove anything, they decided to say we still had neglect charges on us and failure to protect. They, they just would not drop it. So um, we ended up going to court and uh, we ended up having court outside in the hallway because nobody never wanted to put anything on the record and nobody never gave us access to a court reporter. Everything was done in the hallway. And all the attorneys, the, we are two different attorneys and both attorneys were working with CPS and the state of Michigan and tried to get us to plead to no contest. And we told them we don't plead to no contest. We don't plead to anything because we didn't do anything. And I told them that I would not stop until I got my house put back the way they found it. So, uh, and I want to remind our audience at home that uh, in criminal court, it's a burden beyond a reasonable doubt, which is about 99% proof. Uh, in the family court, they use a preponderance of evidence, which makes it about 51% yes. proof. So they're, they're continuing the allegations. Uh, it's, it is kind of surprising that you actually did not go into the courtroom setting, but you actually had meetings in the court in the house. In, yeah, in the court hall, house in the hallway. Um, the judge, uh, you know, I wrote the judge. I, I wrote the Judicial Tenure Commission. I filed a complaint. I did it all because... Um, you know, I felt like our rights were being violated. We had a right to have access to a court reporter and we had a right to have access to a courtroom. Uh, we're not animals and we don't feel like we should be having court in the hallway. Did you ever get any signatures from a judge on any petitions or anything? No. We, um, we received no help from no one uh, in uh, were you asked to take any special programs uh, family preservation programs no they didn't ask us anything because our third attorney walked in there and said to them this is wrong and he filed a motion and he got my son back home within 30 days and 30 days later, this case was cleared up. So, um, so it, a total of nine months and this nine, went on? Yes. And then you finally got two of your boys back. Right. But I, I see that you were also put on the central registry. When did that happen in the process of this nine month period? Well, CPS could not get us to plead to no contest or plead to anything. They said, you won't plead to anything. So 
they put us on the central registry and the new attorney got us got all of that cleared up and we got our license back from Lansing and we started back foster caring um, uh, the little boy that they had removed we were right at the uh, final stage of getting him adopted so he is back in the home both boys are back in the home and we went ahead and we terminated our parental rights because that was the stipulation that we had to terminate our parental rights to our daughter we didn't want to terminate our parental rights however we were so afraid that they were going to to she was going to come back home and they were going to tell her to do something else to us so we could not afford to take her back because we were, we had ran out of money so you got the two boys back right you were put on the central registry you got the two boys back but part of the deal was terminate your rights to to our the daughter. daughter our daughter right and you voluntarily gave up those rights yes they stated in the petition that we had had counseling prior to doing uh, giving up our rights but we had never received any counseling or anything but we were forced to uh, make a decision in like a couple of hours we were forced to make that decision so given everything that we had been through and it was nine months later and we could have drug it out some more but we just felt like that was the in the best interest of our family to try to heal and mend and and do the best that we could for the two boys that we had and tell me how much did this cost to your family as far as monetary value yes it's been seventeen thousand five hundred and counting because we're still fighting. And that could have been money spent on raising a family. Yes. Now, wh while these children were in foster care, were you allowed visits with them? Our son we were allowed visit with. However, our daughter, they would not give us access to her. We went to, uh, to we were supposed to visit with our daughter, however, when we came, we had an advocate for our family to go with us as we uh, had an opportunity to meet with her. And we would deny that opportunity to meet with our daughter at uh, the Vista Maria agency because we had an advocate. Now, why, I don't know. An advocate is someone that helps and uh, represents our family and makes sure that everything that we do at that meeting uh, is, is above board and there's nothing um, underhanded going on. So we were denied an opportunity to visit with our daughter because we had an advocate. Uh, they, uh, the lady from uh, CPS, the, the worker, wanted us to have the advocate wait outside the room while we went inside the room and met with our daughter. I thought that was just one of the uh, uh, silliest things I've ever heard of. Now are you, uh, you said there was four allegations on your home during this period that CPS had uh, contacted? No, uh, um, it was just that one allegation. However, there has been a total of four allegations put on our home that they have information clearing our name and clearing us and they refuse to take the information. Instead, they take the information and misconstrue it and take it and and put it in and, and make it look like you're horrible people, such horrible, horrible people. However, we, we're, we got foster parent of the year. We took psychological evaluations and we passed them with flying colors. So you were foster parents of the year? Yes, we and were. What year was that? 2007 to 2008. So this is just recently due to a allegation by a adopted daughter. Now you had two sons in um, foster care, I believe? One son has already been adopted and the other one we are in the process, in the final stages of adopting him. Well that's now, but 
during this time period. You did yes. have two sons in foster care. No, How, one was adopted and one was in foster care. Oh, well, one was adopted by you or? Yes, by okay. us. So, uh, I mean, uh, what the, uh, when they were taken, you had, they took all three children? They took yes. all three children. Okay. So and how were the two boys treated in foster care? Well, we told them when they took them out of our house, CPS, to please watch our boys because they have some, some sexual issues. However, they, they didn't bother to even watch them and uh, both boys got molested in this file in CPS slash DHS care. So uh, we are having to put in extra therapy to um, help with our boys and stuff and get them on the right track. Now, was that investigated by CPS, the molestation of your two boys in foster care? No, they covered it all up. What about medication? Uh, my son went a, a total of three weeks without any medication uh, because they can't, they gave, uh, the attorney that we had was working with CPS and they let us bring our son home because they didn't have anything. So they let us bring our son home. After we brought him home, he stayed there for a total of one month and they said, you didn't go and do a psychological evaluation. We said, yes, we went and had an independent psychological evaluation done. They said, well, you didn't do it by the state of Michigan, by the guy that does it for the state of Michigan. So they said, we're gonna take your son. They came, they went to the school, they took my son out of the school. They took him out eight days before Christmas of 2009. That's quite a some quite trauma on these boys, the whole family. Uh, yes, they take your kids and they use them as weapons to against you. And they have your kids trying to say negative things about your home and about you, but our kids remain steadfast because they knew they were in a good home. Had we been ahead and did a plea bargain, they would have destroyed our life and probably taken our kids away uh, permanently but we decided to stand fast in what we believe in. And uh, so far, we're doing very well. Right now, I believe you're in the process of adopting the other son. Am I correct? Yes, and they are. Uh, they came back again on April Fool. April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day uh, of, of 2011 stating they have another allegation on our home. And I said, is this an April Fool's joke? Because that's what I thought it was. They are saying now that we are watching the boys too hard. And we're like, what do you mean too hard? Well, you're hyper vigilant. And the definition of hyper vigilant is we're post-traumatic stress, which is not. But we're watching, the, we're keeping the boys safe. And everything that we are doing in the home, we have a safety plan put in place by the agency, Vista Maria Agency. We have um, um, uh, everything that we ha are doing is done by the book per Vista Maria workers. So once we showed them all of that, they cleared the allegation up. However, you still have an allegation on your home. It's just they're constantly, CPS is constantly mudding the water, making you look real bad, making you look like you're just horrible people. Oh, and um, I want to touch to your daughter who you adopted, so the adopted daughter. She was taken by CPS when she was 15 years old. Do you know where her whereabouts is? Do you know what happened to her? Was she returned? No, they took her to a, an agency. She ran off and, and they looked for her for four days. When they found her, she told them that she had been molested. And I don't know what happened on that. 
uh, incident because like I said, we were denied all access. We were denied all service plans. We were not allowed to give any uh, info on uh, planning or anything on our doc uh, daughter's care. We were denied all of that, those rights. In the meantime, the agency ended up slandering our name. We came into foster care to make a difference in our kids' lives or in the kids, the kids' lives that we have in our home and in our care. And I want to know what department do you go to to get your name back? Because at the end of the day, that's all we have is our name, and we want to keep it intact. And uh, with all of uh, the things that CPS is doing to all the foster parents, we are doing the very best that we can and we all should be working together to keep the kids safe and to keep the kids, um, you know, going uh, in the right direction. So, uh, you know, we are very upset about how this system is being ran. Now you are. Uh you have spent $17,500 on this. Have you lost any income due to this? Or I, you know, there must be more of a price tag. Uh, the time that it's talking, have you had to take time off from work? Uh, how much total others, other parts have you lost? I, I believe you listed about 20000 uh dollars worth of hours put into this well you got to figure the wear and tear on your body you got to figure the gas every month running around trying to get uh, go to go to court and everything the mental anguish you got to figure my husband is a store manager and he had to he was able fortunate enough to be able to change his schedule as he needed to however you know uh, lots of people don't have that luxury of being able to do that. So we ran up credit cards. We we gave away our income tax. You know, we what little savings we had, you know, and we're still spending. Because the same judge that had this case is the judge that's doing the adoption on our son now. So and uh is it the same worker that had your case doing the adoption um, process too? Uh, Sorry, the same no, but it is the same CPS supervisor that was instrumental in taking our kids out of the home. He was the supervisor that was on call. It was the same supervisor that took our kids out illegally because they were definitely taken out illegally. So you've been going at this for two to three years and you're still fighting this thing because you're trying to adopt this other child and you should know, I believe, in another month or two. And by the time we air this program, uh, we promise not to air this program until we have a, some determination on that. Right. Um, this kid has been in 30-something placements and to date they are saying uh, well, we don't think that uh, uh, this these are good parents. How can you say that when we got him out of residential, he's stable, June 17th will make a year that he's been back in our home, but when he left in 2008, he was in eight to nine placements. And the last one ended up being hospitalized and residential. Now we have him back in our home, we got him on the honor roll. We have him on the superior honor roll. We have him 100% um, uh, attendance at school. We have him in choir. We have him uh, doing dance lessons. He did his first recital in May uh, with the Warren Community Center. We have him in social skills uh, therapy. We have him in sexual abuse therapy. And we have him in the behavior therapy. Okay, we got about two minutes left, and when you went into this, did you realize CPS was like this? Did you, uh, what, what were your thoughts then and now? Do you think that there might be some foster children out there that 
should be with their parents. What, what's your thoughts on this? I would say over 90 percent of these kids that is in foster care have been taken illegally. I know for a fact that they have just went up in there like bounty hunters and just just took people kids and and it's a whole group of people that are being oppressed and when they stop taking the kids now they're working on the grandparents so it's it's really really scary as to what's going on with this whole system and at the end of the day it's not about the kids it's about the money federal dollars from uh but what I'm seeing here is there's a couple of words, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yesterday, there were things that were done, and as we learn more about the kind of things that we need to do and each agency should do to help support foster parents and foster children, I think about today. Today, we're trying to take some corrective action to ensure that these things don't happen again, because tomorrow, our children are looking for some balance and some stability. And if we can't give that to them from what we've learned yesterday, today, our tomorrow is going to be wasted. We'll have a lot of children wrapped up in our judicial system where they'll never be free. And all it takes is someone to think and be honest and people we can trust. That's what we need to have going forward. And once we establish those characteristics, we're winning. Today, we're figuring it out. Well, I want to thank both of you for coming on today. Uh, I think you hit on the nose when you said about 90% of those in foster care probably don't belong in foster care. They don't. Uh, that's what we're seeing. Uh, we can't even get a straight answer out of DHS what abuse and neglect is. Exactly. Uh, so I think you hit it pretty good on the nose. Um, the state of Michigan just hired 723 more foster uh, uh, CPS workers and um, I see more children being taken away yes. so I want to thank you guys for coming sure. I want to thank you thank, thank you. you folks for, out there for watching uh, if you have any questions or comments you can email us at mi piranha rights at gmail.com that's mi piranha rights at gmail Com. We have a social network that I'd like you to join. This is how people are meeting up, how we're uh, getting our stories out there to let the public know what is happening in the, the child welfare system here in Michigan. You can visit us at mipiranorights.ning.com. That's mipiranorights.ning.com. And we'll see you next week on Silent Voices. This is Dennis Lawrence saying, remember, your voice can make the difference. Oh, yeah.